fancy magazines when they tell you like what are the cool things to do. But, you know, so but, how many? How many years have you actively been working I in this side of town? I started publishing Brooklyn and Boyle in 2008 and opened a little space that we called Brooklyn and Boyle, a literary salon with Josefina. So we had poetry readings. Um, and when she opened her plays in her first smaller theater, she would have opening night receptions and closing night parties in the little space, which was about two doors down. But we had an alley behind us that, that the actors from the play could could go through their back door and come into my back door and chill out, like the green room, because um, their space was so small that there was no place for them to hang out. Um, and people that, that were close to the actors, other people came through and they said, you know, when Josefina moved, she said, this place is gonna shut down, that we need it here. And we, everybody loves your newspaper, but having a space allows us to, to bring people together like, like we're doing here right now. You know? So you would say a little over 10 years? Uh, eight years. All right, let's say eight years. So. For somebody, so I would, in my, in my terms, I would call you an OG then, because you've been here, you know the lay of the land. I've been Over, in the east side for going on 17 years, and then two more years as, as a first and second grader. So with that being said, can I get your perspective on how Boyle Heights has kind of like transformed or evolved or how it has I, changed? I think it, um, it's, it's on the map. Now people have suddenly noticed, people said, oh, there's an arts renaissance happening in Boyle Heights. And, and I say, no, there isn't an arts renaissance. It, it's been here all along. You just never noticed it. But now that you noticed it and you're coming to see what it is, it suddenly happened. It's as if it didn't exist until you noticed it. And the, the word, there's a word for that. It's called Columbusizing. Mm. Like, you know, you don't exist in, like, until Columbus showed up and all of a sudden he discovered us. Yeah. No, he didn't. He, 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 crashed into us accidentally because he didn't know where the hell he was going mm -hmm. and he, had, he thought he was going to India um, and but you know the people that were here had been here for thousands of years and had art and language and books and medicine and surgery and music and sculpture and those things that you know that they they want to sort of claim ownership of it which is a good reason for the young people that I admire to go and protest the art galleries and, and say you know because uh, you, those people that are opening those galleries can open them anywhere, it, you know, and they don't exist in a vacuum. But if they see so much culture happening here in our community and they still have this subconscious sense of entitlement because they get to decide what is valid, they get to decide what sells, they get to decide what is cool and hip and um, valuable to the rest of the world, they sure as hell can't do that from Bergamont Station in Santa Monica when all the real art, like what you're doing here, is happening on this side of town. So he was like, well, we'll, we'll go and open a gallery because there's a bunch of empty warehouses and, and the rents are good. I, I think that's just a, that's another way of, of disguising the fact that they, they feel like they're ha subconsciously, they don't really acknowledge that they need or feel that, that they are the ones who decide and determine like who gets picked to sit at their table, you know? And yeah. I've always said their table's got um, bland food. Our food's way better. And then if there aren't enough chairs, We'll pull them out of the garage or we'll rent them from the party store for 50 cent seats, you know, where they sell the, the los jumpers and, you know, and, and we will and to bring your tia and if, and if you're black and if you're brown and if you're red, come along, you know, you'll, you, you can eat at our table, hell, if, and, my, and if my daughter likes you, respect her and you might even marry her and, and I'll call you Niero, uh, you know. Yeah, yeah. So, um, Abel, um, I think this is one of the reasons why I also uh, I mean, I, I love everybody's character that's here today well, for one reason or the other. But I think that my connection uh, to you and your brand and your initiative and what you do is that when I speak to you, I feel like if I pick, pick up the newspaper, that rawness, that realness, that that I guess charisma that you yourself bring, I can find it on that newspaper. It doesn't change. It's Thank not you. like I'm. You know, so some of the, some, I actually, and our next guest, I've actually told her, I've kind of quoted her one time telling her this, that, you know, her work stands on her own. It, it stands for itself. I don't have to, like, you know, see her performing it to know what it is that she does. So, and I guess now, like, having this face-to-face -face conversation, this is actually the first time we meet in person. We've actually had a few phone conversations. But now it, it just seems like one and the same, and it's cohesive. You know, now I know that the man behind the paper is not just kind of like some douchebag trying to explore different causes for the benefit of, I guess, his ego. 
And uh, a lot of people can say that about myself too, like, oh, just some dude bringing different artists. And as you can see now, it's not about the fame. I think one of the things that um, you're able to see if you're really involved or really paying attention is that it's not really about the, the person. It's about the mission. It's about the movement. It's, it's about the organizing behind it. And I think even just to do something like this, it takes a lot of time and it takes, you know, hours and hours and hours of planning and texting people. I know that I've called you the day before New Year's and, you know, just to say, you know, Happy New Year. And I called some of the people that have been on here already and the people that are about to come on, just reminding them. So in a way, it can seem like bugging, but, uh, you know, somebody has to do this type of job. Somebody, if you're in it for the fame or the money, you're in the wrong industry. I think that if you do it out of love, you will find 100% of what you want doing these, these type of movements, these, th this type of work. You said it, man. Um, let me ask you this, because this, this, one, this one's actually a per... Well, in a way, all of them are a little personal questions, but this one, um, how is it like running a newspaper, man? Um, in my case, because it's a shoestring budget, it's yeah. lonely. Uh, <laughs> it's like a marriage, and the newspaper is very... Uh, Jealous. Okay. <laughs> uh, I'm, you know, there's some all-nighters that I, I don't like bugging people, or, and I'm not a salesman, yeah. but I do believe what you said about, about, and Che Guevara himself said it. He said, uh, at the risk of sounding ridiculous, I would venture to say that a true, a true revolutionary is driven by a profound sense of love. And when I, when I read that, I thought, you know, you, if you love the world and you love people enough, then you, you're going to be concerned when, when a pipeline full of oil may suddenly rupture under the river and, and poison everybody's water. You know, if you, if you have some, any kind of love for anyone except yourself, and I don't want to go on and on, but because I also wanted to tell you that I admire what you guys have done. This takes a lot of work. And the running the newspaper, I have a lot of help. People, people um, I don't have a, a car. I don't drive. I'll Uber or mm. I got to go down to Gardena to pick up 5,000 copies once a month. And I have um, camaradas. I have uh, people, good people who say, hey, is the paper ready? Let's go pick it up. And there's a sense that it, it, it belongs to everybody. And I'm, I'll open it up to people who have opposing viewpoints and, and they don't believe that I will, but I, I will, you know, Although I, I might have to draw the line at Donald Trump and his goons and those Republicans who want to turn back the clock and, and who are like on their last legs and they, read, yep. they see that the country is changing and they want to hold it off as long as they can. So it's like a rabid dog, you know? Yeah. The, the rabid dog is like about to attack its own, the, the people who have fed it. And in this yeah, case, yeah. we are the people who have fed them, worked for them, raised their children, cleaned their toilets, cooked their meals and cleaned their houses for the last 40 or 50 years and now that it, it, it gets to the point where we're all doing it for each other, there's this sort of like, oh no, it's our country. No, it's not. It, there were people here when Columbus got here. And what's happened to them? They're getting oil pipelines built under their rivers and they're, and they're getting rubber bullets and tear gas and, you know, that, I have to oppose that. But I think, you know, you turning the page with what art wars can mean, or we, we take the, the fight out from kids who live for their block and their set and their clica mm. to a bigger struggle that, that I was fortunate to learn about when I was very young. You know? So, you know, and I've taught poetry because the other thing, I work with a magazine called Wisache, which is the national, it's the best literature magazine for Latino writing in the country, maybe the world. And I'm going to, I'm going to go to Washington, D.C. and do a poetry reading. But um, there's Wisache poetry thing. It, I taught poetry at Juvenile Hall at Eastlake uh, over at Barry J. Niedorf, and um, I don't know if Nolan can pop the magazine cover. That, that's the new one. The cover mm. is by a legendary Chicano artist named mm. John Valadez, and um, inside are, <laughs> are lino cuts by an artist from Boyle Heights named Daniel Gonzalez, who's a printmaker, and who also you know, is, is committed to the causes that, that we all Hold. So if, if we can go with poetry or music, like the people that you have here, and, and teach the young people that, you know, if we're, if we're standing together and loving each other, we can, we can get somewhere. And definitely, I'm definitely. proud of you, Mijo, for doing it. Hold on, hold on. I got like two more minutes. Don't run away from me just yet. Um, for those that want to read the newspaper, where can they pick it up? Um, self Graphics, anywhere along First Street or Cesar Chavez. 
uh, Avenue 50 studios in Highland Park, restaurants like um, La Abeja on Figueroa, or Antojitos, um, El Riconcito del Mar on First Street, um, or shoot me an email, brooklynandboyle at gmail.com, or www.brooklynandboyle.com. Um, and if, if there are any left, the problem is now that I'm doing 5,000 copies, they run out pretty oh. quick. I used, when I started, I, I had enough to go, I would take them to Highland Park, but also Silver Lake and Echo Park. Now I can't even go to Silver Lake. I maybe don't even want to go to Silver Lake or Echo Park because the, the people have changed. But, of course. Um, they run out, so until I get to the point where I have somebody who knows about money, because I suck at business, but <laughs> I, uh, okay. I, um, some people call me and say I want to buy an ad, or, you know, Long Beach, there's the MOLA, the Museum of Latin American yeah, Art, yeah, yeah. They, they got a hold of me because they're doing a big Frank Romero retrospective, oh, that's right. and that's they right. said, we want to, we, we want the people that read Brooklyn and Boyle to come see this show, it's an important Chicano artist who has never had a a one-man retrospective of his work in his life, like where the whole museum is dedicated to his work. Um, and we share resources, and uh, you know, I trade. I love to barter, you know, so if you ever wanna I love go it. eat the best mole in Boyle Heights, it's at a restaurant called Las Molenderas, and they make the mole from 32 ingredients from scratch. Zam. That's how many different ingredients go into, the, and it's a, it's a woman named Marisol Peregrino and her mother. And all right, all right, definitely, she's definitely. from Puebla, and she named her Brand new baby boy who was born on December 1st, Brandon. Brandon, and so salute. Know how to fit in. <laughs> all right, all right. Well, listen, Avel, thank you hey, so man. much for going on. I really appreciate your time. Um, uh, I look forward to working with you on the event for the 25th of February. I saw Weezar earlier today at a funeral. I also wanted to just, on a somber note, give a shout out to Jonathan Sanchez. Oh, right there, right there. Get, get, get that FaceTime right there. Go uh, ahead and let him know. Jonathan Sanchez, rest in peace. Uh, this community and the community at large appreciates your pioneer, your pioneering visionary work as a publisher behind the Eastern Group publications. Um, Gloria Alvarez will take up the mantle. I'm very proud to have worked with her. And um, your family stands as an example of, of proving to the world that something can be done. If it wouldn't have been for Jonathan Sanchez and the Eastern Group publications and the East Side Sun, uh, which gave a lot of journalists like Luis Rodriguez, who's the poet laureate for the whole city of Los mm, Angeles, mm -hmm. always running. Luis Rodriguez got his start as a journalist at, yeah. at the East Side Sun. So I just wanted to um, do a quick send off for Jonathan Sanchez, who sure. uh, uh, had a service today in Highland Park. And sure. All right, brother. Well, thank you so much. Um, again, definitely going to keep collaborating, keep talking. And um, yeah, brother, appreciate keep your time. Whatever you need me to do, I'm there, man. No uh, doubt, no uh, doubt. Take me up on the mole. <laughs> I got you. Oh, you goody? All right, bro. So um, before we get into our next guest and this group here, amazing work. Um, and I'm going I'm to let them like simmer a little bit until we get there. But I want to check in on the art. All right, what's the deal, man? Give me that update. Let us, let us check it out really quick. What's going on back there? Just uh, working on like... Something quick, as I mentioned earlier. <laughs> oh. He doesn't want to stay. <laughs> you good? Yeah. There you go. It's because once I get into it, I got to get into it. I got to keep going. Yeah, I didn't even know you had that type of firepower, bro. <laughs> Man. Okay. Yeah. All right. All right. We'll get back into it in a bit then for sure, bro. Um, like I was saying before, our next guest, a group of talented... Man, I... Entrepreneurs, um, I guess community activists, everything under the sun that represents something I would want to do if I, if I was an octopus by myself or if I had that many arms. Uh, I just had the pleasure to go ahead and uh, be introduced and meet and work alongside the Peace Club. So at this point, I'm going to invite the Peace Club to come on and uh, take a seat. Hopefully it's enough or you guys can like lap it or something. Brother. How you Thank you. How you Thank you for being here. How's it Family. Family. You good? How are you? Hi, Mario. Oh, man. Chilling still. How are you? Nice to see you. What's going on, bro? Chilling? Yeah. Come on. Family. Who, who want it? All right, all right. So, 
again, thank you all so much for being on here today. Um, I know you guys do a lot of work. I know you guys are always active. I know you guys are always busy. So it means the world to me, as I've told everybody else on here, that you guys could come out and share a little bit of your time with me. Um, I must say one thing, though. When it comes down, well, I'll let you guys explain what you guys are up to and what you guys do. But when it comes down to like professionalism and being on point with like, uh, at this point, I would say in a bit customer service and like being people friendly, you guys always hit the nail. It, it's always like second, second to none, always, you know, one of one. So for those that don't know, can you kind of tell them, can you guys kind of speak a little bit about the club, where it come for, comes from, and what's the mission behind it? Okay, of course. So my name is Angel Roman, and I'm the co-president of the Peace Club, and we're actually a club from Casa Dominguez Hills, and right here, Carlos can explain our mission. So go ahead, Carlos. So our club is based on a mission statement that we created for our club to represent. And our club mission statement is um, to create peace within ourselves, our community, our country, and our world. And the thing that goes behind our mission statement is just creating change in our community and just creating an impact. And just showing that self-empowerment is important to every individual and that you can start from the bottom up and create change no matter what. Man. That's great, bro. I mean, when I first heard about it, when I went to uh, one of the first meetings um, over at the school and just do, I guess you guys had like a little meditation session and we kind of did like a breathing exercise. I was like, man, I need this every day. Unfortunately, I don't have a car. I ride a beach cruiser bike around the city. So I couldn't, you know, I can't really be making those long distance trips. Um, but I'm going to definitely make sure that I, I work my way over to that side of town. Um, Tell them where, uh, can you guys speak about where the Peace Club is located at? Where you guys, um, where's the facility or is there like a building or where do you guys, what do you guys represent? So we represent where, we're from Cal State Dominguez Hills. So it's a club that we created at our school and we just wanted to create an impact. So if you guys are trying to find us anywhere, we're at Dominguez Hills. And you could like check us out on our social media or look at our school page and just search up the Peace Club. We're on there. <laughs> you guys seem like a diverse set of human beings. Um, and this question might be a little odd, but I, I must ask it. Um, ask it. Uh, what kind of people join the Peace Club? Like, what kind of people do you guys work with currently and I guess are about to start working with? Well, when we originally started, uh, we wanted to target college students. But then we decided that we wanted to go bigger. So now we accept um, people from all ages. So kids from three to elderly to adults, anybody who's really trying to become better within themselves, because the people we're trying to target mainly on campus and off campus are those who've gone through a couple of tragedies, who may have had a couple of addictions or traumas. And our monthly meetings and what we do is we help them heal by going out into the community and being involved in different events and then bringing it back home. So they help others while others help them and we all heal together. I think that's who we're trying to target. And that could be anybody, whether you're young or old, it really works out at the end of the day. So time out. So if I live in a community around the school and I see you guys having like some type of fundraiser, I can just like walk up, cool out with you guys and be like, hey, can I like join? Yes, we, we tend to accept everyone, although you might not be on the roster since our name includes Cal State Dominguez Hills. Mm -hmm. You're still a member um, at large with our community. So either way, you can come in, you can do our events, you can still do meditation with us, you can volunteer mm. with us. And we provide carpool, so everyone's welcome. And sometimes we even provide picking somebody up if they're really willing to help the community. Mm, okay. All right, I'm gonna definitely, you know, give you guys a little call instead of Uber next time to come to the <laughs> kind of the campus, you know? Um, uh, another great question, I think, that uh, a lot of people rarely speak about, but I think that it should be highlighted at this, highlighted at this point, is uh, why does volunteer work matter? So um, volunteer work matters so much because there's a lot of people who are in need there's a lot of people who are hurting. Um, I, it's really funny because 
before I started volunteering, it was one of those things where people always talk about it, like, oh, volunteering is like, oh, I went and volunteered for Christmas, or I went to volunteer for whatever holiday, right, for Thanksgiving. And it's funny because my sister one day told me, she's like, you know what's funny about people is that they want to volunteer, you know, for certain moments. But people are hurting all over the place all the time, or whether it's physically or emotionally, or they just need someone to talk to. So for me, the reason why volunteer matters so much is because there's a need, and I'm here, I'm healthy, I can fulfill it. And I think with volunteering too is like, when people are not on the clock, the only value that you see are people. It's not, oh, it's my money, there's a job description. So there's a tendency to people, for people to come together, and their one main goal is the person or you know whatever they're volunteering for. So it's very important. And you never know sometimes, like I've seen situations with people, like when I volunteered at, um, it was for a Gobble Gobble Give. And there was a gentleman walking, and I didn't know he was homeless. I would have never thought so. So it's one of those things where you never know if the opportunity is not there for you to help somebody because you may be in that position. So mm -hmm. it's, it's about helping one another, connecting and loving one another, and, of course, having peace. Wow. It all makes sense now. Does I it? Yeah. I hope so. <laughs> yeah, I think before it was just like, man, somebody wants me to go help them and not pay no. me. Oh, man, no, no. You know, I, I think that's how generally, you know, when somebody kind of, I, I guess as an artist, you know, you're all like, oh, can you, you know, come life paint for me? And, you know, usually you're like, bro, are you going to at least provide me with a water? Right. Like, am I going to get, like, a <laughs> pan dulce or, like, get something, you know, at least get something. something out of it, yeah, right? Yeah, you know, but I think now that I, the, the way you explained it to me makes it seem, not seem, but in actuality, it's just more than giving, I guess, uh, time. It's, it's a piece of who you are. And I think that Absolutely. in return, not only are the connections valuable, but I think that you, to do this work, again, kind of like the work that I do, you really have to care or have a great um, understanding of what exactly you're volunteering for. Exactly, exactly. Um, so my next question, and a great segue, is um, what makes, I, I guess, you, how many events have you guys already volunteered at? If, is that like, do you guys already done like five, six, or is it? Don't tell me it's in the hundreds either. Oh, <laughs> no, it's not in the hundreds. <laughs> Don't flex out on me that hard. Nah, uh, we like 2,000. No. <laughs> All right. So currently, we've had about 10 or 15 events that we volunteered for. We, one of yours was actually one of them. Mm -hmm. And usually we hit areas like the LA area where it's the Midnight Mission and Union Rescue Mission. And we also went to One Voice. It was really amazing because we could see all these families that we are in need. And then just us being there, knowing that we're going to make a difference. It kind of, you get this feeling in your heart. So it's just something that we really take seriously when it comes to volunteer work. We have done a lot. So what makes an event special? Or how do you know when an event like is over the top with it? Because I know sometimes maybe you might show up to volunteer and it's just like, who do I talk to? Seven different people are giving me orders. Or like, how do you know like when an event is like magnificent? Like, do you feel it? Or is it like in the people that are speaking to you? Or is it in the organization, the agenda? Like, help me understand this. Like, how do you know when this is an event like, yo, I'm going to be right. back. All right, for sure. Damien, you got that one? Uh, okay, so um, what I think makes an event successful is uh, when all hands, hearts, and minds, you know, are all on the same page and they come together. So um, in the past, we've had small events, you know, somewhat big, and then we had really, really big events in the past. So, um, for example, one of our events could be, like, uh, the monthly meetings. So... During those meetings, we kind of like need to f uh, figure out ideas. So in order for those ideas to come true, we have to uh, have a specific meeting every single week. So on Fridays, we would meet and we would discuss, you know, how it's going to be organized, how it's going to, um, what's, what it's going to be about. And by having us all together in the same room, you know, with different ideas, how we're going to, you know, figure this out. You know, we all just like, you know, we come together, and at the end of the day, our purpose is to, you know, give peace to whoever comes in. We want to make them feel welcome, you know. We want people to feel like they belong somewhere, they have a safe environment. So um, I think it's just pretty much the collaboration and, you know, that union that we actually find. We want to, we want to find that. So, um, you know, and along, alongside that, I think it's just, you know, the bond that we all share. So, yeah, that's pretty much it. <laughs> <laughs> to, to have to want to help 
I mean, has to be rooted in you. Again, um, I think uh, as you guys have been hearing uh, the way I speak, how I, I guess, uh, pronounce different things when I go ahead and give a little more um, description on other things or the way I just highlight things that have impacted me or the people that come up here, you can kind of see that there is a love for, I guess, humanity at the end of the day. So you guys just, you know, like radiate that, like here and, you know, once we've worked together. So I kind of want to go back a little bit, back in time, and uh, to, you guys have already helped me for two events. And um, just kind of ask you guys, like, what made you say, like, okay, I'm willing to take this risk for the ones that were there? And um, what made you say, I'm going to come twice, or I'm going to come once more to help out and be able to, you know, facilitate this without, you know, any question? Right, well, your first event was the Economics of Public Art Forum. And when you told me what Art Wars LA stood for, that's when I was mind blown. I was actually like, oh, this is an organization that we would be willing to help out because what they want to do to the community. And... Once we saw your mission and what you want to do, we were like, oh, okay, let's check out their next event. They probably have something else for the community. That's when we went to ALTMM, and that was a very amazing meeting as well. A lot of community interaction, and that's what our mission statement is. So you know, a way that we create peace is through volunteer work. So because that's a, us giving peace to the community by giving back to them, by being there to support one another. So that's why we, all, we chose to come back a second time. And we'll come back a third time, too, if you need it. For sure, for sure. I definitely want to make sure you guys are involved in this next one. Um, as you can tell, I definitely got you know, a new roster of talent. But over, over uh, talent, I would say like a, a great roster of human beings that are you know, finally coming together and meeting each other, people from different parts of the city. And some people that actually go to the same school don't even know that you, know, you guys are in the same parameters. Um, what I want to know is that I know that the, the Peace Club is amazing, but um, I know you once shared to me what your goal is, and I, don't, I want you to say it. So can I just, like, pass the mic around, or you guys do that, and just kind of say, like, this is what I want to become, or this is what I'm working on, or, like, okay. just so they know, like, okay, not only are they cool, and this is a dope-ass squad to be a part of, <laughs> but this is who these, you know, leaders of tomorrow are becoming. Okay, so you want my whole dream. <laughs> well, just, just like the tagline, like, okay, so your name and I guess what your, your vision is for once you're out of, or your, your dream job, I guess. Okay, so my name is Andrew Roman, and my dream job is to become the president of the United States in the future. So Ooh. that's something I want to do. That's right. Well, hi, I'm Alondra Caronco, and I'm the service representative for the club. And I'd say my dream job is to be part of the Supreme Court and a lawyer someday but eventually have my own organization that helps kids, um, especially from low-income families, be part of uh, the dance community, the art community, because I know sometimes it can be so expensive. So providing all those tools for kids from low-income families. Hey guys, my name is Vanita. Um, gosh, where to start? <laughs> I have like the short-term ones and the long-term ones, and but um, my main thing with me is I do feel that I'm filled with a lot of love, and it's corny, and I, I even told these guys this <laughs> like a week ago. I'm like, it's corny, but I have so much love to give, but I do. So with me, um, people, talking with people and connecting um, wherever um, I can be used is really where I'm at. So volunteering, I'm, like, I have a heart for that. Um, but in the long run, as far as school goes, I am a psychology major, and um, I want to go into therapy. I would like to be a licensed clinical social worker. So once I'm done with my bachelor's, going into the master's, and I'm going to continue volunteering and just stick with these guys till the very end love it yeah so my name is carlos ibarra and um, my dream job is becoming a successful ceo for a major company so i'm aiming high i'm aiming real high like i want to be a ceo for like google or something and i'm just gonna aim high because that i feel like i have the ability to do that and i believe in myself and that's the most important thing that i truly want it's just to be a successful ceo and running a major organization or company and that's the best part. So that's what I'm aiming for. Best thing I can do. <laughs> Love it. All right. So my name is Damian Velasquez. And, you know, honestly, like Vanita, I don't know where to start either. Um, <laughs> but one thing I really want to mention before I say what I want to be is that, you know, 
uh, back in my sophomore year, I believe in high school, I used to volunteer with, with some kids back at a public library in Santa Ana, which is my hometown. Um, I used to like, you know, teach them how to, uh, how to read, um, improve their uh, verbal skills, communication skills, as well as reading, reading skills. So, you know, it was just a big opportunity for me to not only give back to my community, but interact with children. Because, you know, children has always been like one of those weaknesses I have that makes me more, more fuzzy on the inside. So, you know, to just share that bond, not just with the children, but with librarians and, you know, fellow staff, it just gave me this mentality too. Like that, you know, I want to work with children, but outside of those doors, you know, um, there's a lot of violence and especially in my area, it's more, it's very gang infested, there's a lot of drugs, alcohol, and, you know, that made me get into like criminal justice work. So at this point, I am a criminal justice major and I just I decided to combine those two. So in the future, I hope to be possibly a corrections officer and work with juveniles. So, you know, that's just something that I really want to I really want to do because I want to touch their hearts too. Like there's kids that are not in juvie just because of what they do, but it's their past. You know, they probably live in a certain environment that's not safe, yeah. and because of that, they're affected by it and it just, you know, it kind of like triggers them to do certain things that, you know, that are wrong and without them realizing it. So, you know, having that big opportunity in the future will probably like be um very powerful and it'll hopefully change uh, the future generation. Yeah, uh, man, it's, it sounds like already with the work and I guess by just seeing all of you guys together, it's just like, yeah, I believe it. I, I believe it. I definitely <laughs> want to keep being a part of, you know, whatever you guys got going on. So um, at this point, where can they find some of uh, your information? Who, um, who can they speak to in regards to possibly joining and some of those inf to, uh, social media handles? So our, in okay. <laughs> our Instagram is at the Peace Club, and on our bio it has our mission statement, and it also has our CSUDH. So that's our location, CSUDH. Uh, you can actually speak to any one of us. Uh, we have a total of 14 board members, so you can talk to any of us 14. And what was the other question? Shout outs. Anybody you want shout to shout outs? Out? Shout out to my girlfriend Marina. She's sitting down over there. <laughs> shout out to my parents because they do believe in me and shout out to all the other Peace Club board members who could not make it today but you guys are all in our hearts all right all yeah. right thank you uh shout out to everybody who we volunteered for such as Art Wars LA because uh places like that make us better every single day make us want to do more every time um, especially to all of our parents in the club because they're very supportive because we're always working and they think it's a little hard but you know at the end of the day it pays off and um, just everyone who supports us and everyone who believes in us so and thank God. I think that you know thanking those that believe in you has to always be like number one because those are the people that put up with you talking about the same thing 50 different times, 50 yes, different definitely. ways. So with that being said, I want to thank you guys so much for being on. I will definitely kill myself if I wouldn't, if I don't say this, Marina, but she's back there behind the scenes. She was yeah. very <laughs> instrumental in our last event. And I want to publicly say whatever you need, you know, don't forget that we're here and if anything, please, you know, keep us in mind because the work that you were able to help us do and the work that we're doing, we definitely need strong-minded people like them and yourself. So thank you so much, Peace Club. Um, thank you for being on. And um, I guess we'll keep talking. Thank yeah, you so much. Thank you so much. Oh, what the, one last thing is I actually have a volunteer shirt under right here. Mm -hmm. It's a 5K run we did. Quote, it's pretty amazing. So shout out to them too. Awesome. All righty, you guys. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Let me give this mic to you. Hi, brother. Thank you. Hi, brother. Oh. Thank you. Yeah, no doubt, no doubt. Well, we're almost boiling down to the last few minutes of this. Um, before we introduce our next artist and our kind of like our closer to all of this madness, um, I want to make sure that you guys do remember that all of this is done through the labor of love. If you love something, pursue it. Reach it. Go after it. Nobody's going to give it to you. Nobody's going to walk up to you and say like, hey, this is for you, or is this what you want? Nobody, nobody. You got to get it on your own. Go out there every day, grind it out every day. Try to go ahead and inspire 
yourself. If you, if you can't do it for yourself, do it for somebody that didn't have the chance to. Do it for somebody that, that is no longer with us. Do it for somebody that wanted to do what you're doing now and unfortunately didn't have the chance. So with that being said, um, our last artist that we want to go ahead and introduce here today, um, I personally call her uh, Lola. That's her, I guess, artist name. Other people call her Nikki and all this, and I'll let her introduce herself like that. But um, as of right now, I want to introduce Lola. Lola, how are you? I'm good. How are you, Phoenix? Fantastic. Thank you so much for being on here with me today. Thanks for having me. So, um, Lola, for those who don't know you, uh -huh. tell them about your medium. Um, I'm a poet. My name is Lola, and I'm a poet. Alrighty, so to be a poet, as you guys know, you have to do a lot of writing. So when it comes down to writing, how, like, how did you know that was your lane? Um, well, it's, it's really weird. I, I don't know, poetry to me always seemed kind of abstract. It was kind of um, a level I aspired to be. But I recall this, um, this thing happening. I was at a museum. I was in fifth grade, and I was with um, my fifth grade class. And our teacher wanted us to write a poem about uh, an art piece that we seen. So I chose the ocean, and um, I wrote like I don't know a little like four line poem. And uh, my teacher said that it was really beautiful, and she looked shocked, like something had like hit her inside or something, like she wanted to cry. And I was like, "Does this like what is what does this mean?" You know. Um, and from there, I don't know. It's always kind of been in my head like I should probably do this more often. So, as a fifth wow. grader. Dang. I know. As a fifth grader. I know. <laughs> that, that completely just shaved, not shaved, changed, <laughs> I guess, your direction um, in life. I mean, that must have been, like, really instrumental to move you to what you're doing, That's obviously. Yeah. It's, you know, it's always, it's always been a struggle, though, because, you know, like, the poets that we read about when we're in school, they're not like me. They don't look like me. They're not from where I come from. So even as a fifth grader and my teacher saying, hey, that was good, you know, in the back of my mind, I'm like, well, I'm never going to be as good as like Edgar Allan Poe or I'm never yeah. going to be, you know, um, who Emily Dickinson in the books. Like, yeah. you know, who am I? Who am I? This little like, you know, Mexican in L.A. just writing about a piece that she sees on a museum art wall. Yeah. So um, tell me about this name in Lola, because I like calling you Lola. <laughs> But your real name is? Nikki. And I, I know all of your friends call you Nikki. Yeah. Um, so just before she says all of that, she probably doesn't remember, but one of the days after we had um, our rehearsal for our fashion show with the ALTWM uh, Mujeres, uh, we, had, we were able to attend one of the shows, uh, I think it was curated by Marv, mm -hmm. and um, the name of the show was called, do you remember? Uh, ooh, yes, I know this. It was... <laughs> Uh, well, yeah, the new yeah. one is called Locked in Rage, Emotions on Display, yeah. but um, I'm a little nervous right now, which is why I, can't, I don't remember. Sorry, Marvin. I'm sorry. Salute. Double, sal double salute, Marvin, because you feel me? We, we're working on something as well. So when you see this, just know that it's nothing but love. Yeah. Um, so she was out there. We were supporting some of our mujeres, but um, overall, she was, she was one of the poets that was there, and I think that when I heard her, her work, it, it just had a, a like a quick punch to it. I was like, ugh, like, what's going on? Hold <laughs> up. Like, pause, you know? Um, so I definitely wanted to reach out to her and um, kind of like, I didn't introduce myself that day. Usually when I go out, I'm not like on promoter mode. I just, especially when it's with the mujeres that we're working on already. If I have a project in hand, I'm never trying to over flex or over like, you know, put super work on my back. So I didn't like go after her like that day. Uh, thank God we have social media. Social media was one of the tools that helped me connect with this uh, mujer here. Um, so yeah, so I was able to see you live and perform and um, I was there with some of the mujeres that were in my previous project. So um, I just wanted to highlight that, that I seen her already. Thanks. So tell us about the name. Okay, Lola. Lola Itzel. So, um, so Lola's weird because Lola is the name of my boy bunny. And that's like the love of my life. I love him so much. Um, and people always give me shit. They're like, why is his name Lola? You know, is he a gay bunny? I'm like, dude, bunnies don't know gender. They don't care. Like, 
a name is a name. He responds to Lola. It is what it is. So I like the idea attached to that. It's like people trip out because Lola's a boy. And um, Itzel, she is the Mayan goddess of fertility. So I identify a lot with that. Not, I'm not, I mean, like, yeah, I'm a young woman and I'm fertile, but like, I'm not. The message behind Itzel is that she is connected with water and um, helping plants grow, planting seeds, um, just the whole idea of helping grow, essentially. And I feel like as a person, that's who I am. I help a lot of people grow just by planting little seeds. And, and I'm a water sign, too, and I'm very spiritual. So um, I adopted that name as my, as my artist name. And then, well, she's often depicted with a bunny, so... Here I am, girl with the bunny. So, Lola Itzel. Uh, yeah, okay. just comes full circle. A little dash of flavor on there, <laughs> huh? Okay. Yeah. Um, so it, it seems like you're a very knowledgeable uh, mujer. Um, which uh, I think I told you this as well. Uh, the reference I did earlier was mm-hmm. that um, when we spoke on our first FaceTime meeting was that after hearing your work. You know, it, it doesn't, you know, not that it doesn't need you, but it stands on its own. And to my sex reference, a lot of people try to like cop it out, cop out and go ahead and, you know, try to flash too much skin and do all of this. And it's just like, yo, if, if you're talented, then your art is going to speak for you. So um, I must know, what inspires you? Everything inspires me. <laughs> Life inspires me. Um, I'm... I have this this saying, it's live now, love forever, okay? And it's tattooed on me because life is short and you never know when you're going to die. You never know what's going to happen next. It's, it's here today and gone tomorrow. So that's how I live my life and I'm inspired by things that are just beautiful. I think everything's beautiful. I tend to find beauty in a lot of things just everything. I mean, this table, I'm looking at it. I'm like, oh, there's beauty. Look, it's Echo in Mexico. Like, mm. there's beauty. I don't know. There's, I'm in, I don't know. I'm just easily inspired. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Easily <laughs> inspired. Yeah. I think that's one of the things that uh, I like about your character, that you're, it's always kind of, I don't want to say flamboyant, but it's always kind of like a cheerful <laughs> Like, you know, when I see my homies or yeah. when I see my boys, I'll always be like, oh, what's good, my boy, double salute. And oh. I think that when I, when I see you, it's just yeah. like I get a double salute every time you smile. You yeah. know, I think it's contagious. I think that um, having that charisma is always amazing, especially when it comes down to something as serious as poetry. You know, yeah. because you want to be taken serious. You want to be, you know, able to say what you want to say and not, you know, be distracted by the crowd and all of that stuff. But, mm-hmm. you know, I think that one of the main things as a poet, I would say that even off stage, if your character is amazing and you're approachable, then that just makes it even better. You know, um, after hearing you, I, I knew you, that you had a perspective. And that's what I personally love that, you know, you stood strong on what you write about. But um, once we spoke, it was just like, oh, bruh, it's like a little hidden gem right here. It was good. Thanks. Um, so I definitely like that perspective. I think that it's, it's always uh, an amazing thing when I can find other people that are really uh, joyful about what they do and not take themselves too serious. As you could kind of see now, like, I, I guess my work is serious, but uh, I try to always, you know, sneak in a smile or two. Yeah, yeah, no, for sure. Tell us about uh, 2017. What does it look like for you? And are you, uh, do you have anything booked already? Where can people come see you? Stuff like that. Um, well, if you guys don't already know about um, Bernsey's Homegirls Por Vida um, show this Saturday, well, I'm going to be reciting a poem alongside um, other amazing women and um, other people of color. And I'm going to be in the zine as well. I have another show a week after that that I'm going to be a part of. Um, called Locked in Rage, Emotions on Display, hosted by uh, Marvin, which is that show that you had talked about earlier. And um, so far, that's that's it. Besides the Art Wars LA on February 25th, right? I'll be a spoken word artist there. I'm not nervous. <laughs> 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 not. <laughs> I am. Uh, <laughs> um, and that's, that's about it. Uh, right okay. now, I'm trying to focus on actually writing as opposed to um, performing it. I really want to just get better at, at writing it. I love it. I love mm-hmm. it. Wait a minute. Did you just tag that right there? 
I wish. I kind of see, like, right here, is, that, <laughs> is this probably the other girls that came in here talking about tagging and all of that, huh? Yeah. <laughs> I didn't even notice that. that. The Nena or Nessa winner? Yeah. Damn. Mm -hmm. All right. So, um, with a special surprise, I didn't really tell, or we actually didn't make this a, a public thing. I actually asked uh, Lola if she can possibly give us a quick sample or a taste or, um, of uh, some of her firework. I think that... Uh, once you get to hear what this mujer has to bring to the table, you'll become, just like me, a number one fan. So, um, Lola, if you can do us a pleasure and kind of, you know, maybe give us one of your pieces, something that you've been working on. You're so kind. Thank you. Okay. Um, so, this piece I wrote for... Um, for... <laughs> For a young man who's locked up right now and he he might be locked up for the rest of his life and that shit is so sad this is the first boy i ever loved and you know growing up in los angeles you know growing up in the hood like you fall for these guys and then you f you fall in love and some of them are taken away early you know because of violence and some of them are taken away because of the system so this one's called uh, My Chicano Brother Behind Bars. I know they set fire to you, so rise from the ashes. Birth your phoenix as most of your sisters have learned to do. See how the world turns and turn with it. Let the moon be your guide and let the tides influence you. Let it teach you, my brother, about how to wax and wane, how to harness the power the universe has given you. Learn the lessons of karma about what goes around comes around and my young hermano, you are not exempt. Learn about the abuse of power. Know that men will take from you as much as you will take from other men, women, and children. Learn to unlearn that power. Learn to embrace vulnerability. Learn that there lies strength in personal growth and growing pains are just the beautiful ways in which your old skin is shedding. My Chicano brother, life is but a series of tests. Most of us fail them at first, but the lesson comes back around until you decipher the message or learn the lesson. See, life will do that to us. Life will come back around full circle and shit will hit the fan on some full moons. So listen to your Chicana sisters when they say to you that all that glitters is not gold. See, you've been sold a dream which was never yours in the first place. You come from Mayan and Aztec blood. That should be enough to tell you you were destined for greatness. So to my brother behind bars, do not give up Pope. It's what they want you to do. Do not turn against yourself. It's what they expect from you. Do not give in to the abuse of power. That's what landed you there in the first place. My brother, you know life in ways I do not know. You know of what it means to be locked up and caged in more ways than I ever will. You know of death and depression. You know of resistance and oppression. You were made in the streets as a warrior, but the streets were never your battle. That was only training camp. Contrary to popular belief, you were never born free. You have always lived in poverty, a modern day captivity. All this time you were fighting in the streets, retaliating against the wrong enemies. So wrapped up in the hood cane, you forgot who invented it in the first place. So to my Chicano brother behind bars, resist. Resist by learning to love yourself as your Chicana sisters have. Blossom in the face of every motherfucker who told you you were a piece of shit. Blossom in the face of every cop who harassed you for no reason. Blossom in the face of every teacher who said that you were dumb. Blossom in the face of everyone and just fucking prove them wrong. Just blossom, boo, and bloom. And, and that's it. Thanks. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thank you guys for listening. Man. <laughs> fingers on the like fire up right now. Um, now you guys see why I want to work with this special individual. Uh, yo, man, if you didn't get that type of energy through all of this and everybody in this room, you probably fell asleep because this mujer right here is one of those. And uh, hopefully I can be a part of that journey and we can, uh, you know, form an alliance beyond, you know, just this uh, quick event, not quick event, but this event that we got coming up. Um, I honestly think that when it comes to writing, it's so, so, so intimate because uh, the, the slightest mistake can just throw you off balance. Yeah. Uh, the, the slightest noise, the slightest color maybe um, can just, you know, like derail you from, I guess, the, the power and the message behind the piece. Yeah. 
Yeah. <sighs> Tell these people where they can find you at. <laughs> you can find me on Instagram at Lolaitzel. That's L-O-L-A-I-X-C-H-E-L. That's Lolaitzel. And um, yeah, just find me on Instagram. I'm not on Facebook at all or Snapchat. So, so yeah. Mm-hmm. There it is. Thank you, guys. All righty, Lola, thank you so Thanks much for, for coming me. on. No, it's my <laughs> complete pleasure and honor to have you this on. This has been fun. <laughs> thank you so much. Cheers. All righty, you guys. So down to the last 10 minutes. Before we get, um, before we get going, I want to go ahead and um, there's a guest in here that she wasn't really supposed to be on here, but I just kind of wanted her to come say hi. So um, Arlene. Can you come just say what's up to us really quick? Arlene. Hey. Hola. So um, real quick, Arlene doesn't really have a, a whole feature on here. I actually asked Arlene to come and, you know, support the boy. And, you know, she's been back there like cheerleading, like, go, oh, you're doing the great. You know, but she's also talented. She's also an artist to look out for. Um, she's also a person that a person that's preserving her culture through her artwork. So just really quick, Arlene, um, I just wanted to go ahead and um, introduce you to the people and just kind of um, let them know your medium and why is it that you do what you do? Um, well, I do, I work, well, I draw. I draw portraits, especially with um, markers. And my inspiration is just my neighborhood. I'm from Highland Park and my inspiration, well, Highland Park, well, it has like a lot of culture. Like I was born and raised there, so it has changed a lot. But just my neighbors and everybody in there, my community was just my whole inspiration, you know? Like, I don't know how to explain it. I just have so much love for it. Like I, I express it through art and I hope when someone like stops by and like looks at my art piece, like how you did in Black Book Sessions, like you could feel like what I feel. Primarily, what are you drawing? Lately, as of lately, like right now? yeah, yeah, like recently. Light. Well, I'm doing the drawing for your event, which is um, life without barriers. Mm -hmm. And what I want to do is just draw um, a a woman, a mujer, and just the streets of LA, because like um, looking with her face, I guess I don't know how to explain it. Um, looking empowered. You see, like, it's life without barriers. Like, no matter what happens, like, all the drugs, the gang violence, um, your issues at home or anything, she's, she's still, you know, up there. She's still um, empowered. She's yeah. still, you know, yeah. Being her and being strong. Yeah. I love it. I love it. Um, again, um, like I said before, I really didn't, you know, have a segment for Arlene, but I think that, yeah. One of the things that is really, really amazing about her is that the technique, or when the first one I saw, was that one pen? Or what it did was you do? Pen and marker. Pen and marker. And just to do, and that was what, the size of this, like 8 by 11 maybe? Yeah. So how long did it take you to do that one? Probably like two days. I was like so, in, like in the zone, just drawing. Two like days. I didn't even eat. <laughs> like I was like, I barely ate because I was just like so into it. Like when I draw, I don't do anything but just draw. I'm just like into it. Two days, no food, just going hammer time on it. So to close this little piece of the segment off, I just wanted to bring her on to show you that not only is there other mujeres out there empowering each other, but also hard work and dedication pays off, right? Yeah. You know, for some people, they collect magazines, others collect games, Xbox, PlayStation, and some people just do artistic things on their free time. So I think that's really cool. Arlene, thank you so much for being here with us. Um, you were so unexpected. <laughs> I wasn't right going to have her on, but I, you feel me? <laughs> Tell them where they can find you at. Um, on, in, on Instagram, AR90042. Just Instagram. Don't cool. <laughs> All righty. So thank you so much, Arlene, for being on with us. Enjoy your presence. <laughs> thank you so much. So. Last but not least, I know we've been having Efrain in the background just cooling off. Um, what's up, bro? Let us know. We got what, like four minutes? Bring that up over here and show us what, what the whole madness well, is about. Well, this is just like an idea of a, a, also just what everybody's talking about, just barriers and uh, Whoa. barriers and just different gente getting together. 
uh, in this case, we'll just different. Uh, where is it at? So the audience can see it over there. Yeah, this is what I just kind of put together as uh, since like the days we spoke. Because you mm -hmm. know, I'm always doing like trying to do this Course. business, that business. So. Of course. Um, yeah, if they could just see it from there. Man. And I'll say Listen, this wasn't even three hours, bro. It's like an hour and some change. Yeah, uh, you know, just going off of what everybody here uh, was talking about, just community, unity, working together and just getting to, um, just like more, doing more for others than rather just yourself. Like yeah. just, you know, that's why I was listening to especially her poem that, you know, that hit me. So I was like, damn, you know. So you would say that this was inspired by everything yeah, by you everybody. heard today. Yeah, that's why I was, uh, you know, I was like just kind of listening and going as we were shooting and just kind of listening to what everybody was saying, all the groups and the individuals. And uh, I just went off of that because a lot of everybody was mentioning, you know, how, you know, this is the east side and, yeah, you yeah. know, we don't get the same attention from, you know, the other sides and just kind of, if you want to do something about it, you have to take, you know, the first step and do it on your own and nobody's going to give it to you. Nobody's going to be like, hey, you know, come over here. Yeah. Like what you said. Damn, so episode yeah. 94 is encapsulated in that piece right there. Yeah. Even Arlene's little segment, her little, you know, what she spoke about, inspired you? Everything? Yeah, because she was mentioning her technique. I have no technique. You know, I was like, whoa, somebody's here with technique. I don't have technique. I just go off of, you know, what I've learned and just pick it up here and there. That's right. That's right. So. Well, brother, I think I'm down to the last two minutes. Um, it's been a, an amazing experience. I've never hosted a show before. Again, I want to thank you. I can't thank you enough, bro, for giving me the opportunity to come out here and just, you know, bless, bless uh, DroneBoxLabs.com, um, the Esquilax Hour, and um, just being in the presence of a lot of people that have an initiative behind what they're doing. I think that's it, yeah. The, the essence of trying to be a part of something bigger than themselves and ourselves at this point. So thank you all for you know, joining me and uh, helping me spread the word that community activism is not dead. You know? uh, we don't have to be on TV to create our own pockets and you know, put all our messages out there. So for me, just a quick shout outs for sure. I can't leave this show without shouting out my baby mama because, you know, she allows me to do all of this and, you know, go out here and do what I do. Um, Council member Jose Wiesard's office, CD14, for uh, believing in our mission. We will be having our event at the Boyle Heights City Hall, um, giving us the opportunity to come and, you know, come into this side of Los Angeles and share our creativity. Um, man, do you want to, you got any shout outs, anything you want to say? Just shout out to everybody who's been working with you in Art Wars. Uh, I didn't mention it, but the way I found out about you guys was through Robski. So, and he came like a year ago, I believe. So thank you, Robski, for that one time you came through and then showed, told me about Art Wars. And, you know, that's how we were linking up. And this is just the first of many. This isn't the end. Yeah, yeah, no, definitely. We try to always, uh, you know, with anybody that we work with, it's just the beginning. We're out here, you know, trying to create long, uh, long-term relationships just because we do one event. Just because we do one event in uh, this certain community doesn't mean that it's one and done. It's just, you know, uh, a continuation of it. You know, it's, it's in a way to be continued. So hopefully you guys, I can see everybody that's watching this. Hopefully you guys uh, could come down to the event on February 25th, 2017. It's a Saturday, uh, Life Without Barriers. Hope to see you there. Um, again, my name is Phoenix LAX, creative director behind Art Wars LA. And um, I think that's about it. Double salute. <laughs> Hasta luego. Good, I'm good, I'm good. Is this one off right here? Hey, do that down. <laughs>